Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. The article of impeachment against now former President Trump in the hands of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tonight, saying she plans to deliver it to the Senate on Monday, almost two weeks after the House voted on the impeachment. KCAU 9's Raquel Martin reports now in our top story at 5. Despite Republican pushback, Democrats are moving full steam ahead to put former President Donald Trump on trial. There will be a vote whether to convict the president. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi now says she will send the article of impeachment to the Senate Monday. Members of the United States Senate are more than an impeachment jury. We are eyewitnesses to what happened. Illinois Democratic Senator Dick Durbin says there must be a fair trial as soon as possible. The idea of inciting an insurrection against the government of the United States is probably the worst imaginable conduct by a president of the United States. An impeachment trial could start as early as Tuesday, but there could also be delays as both sides sort out trial rules. You got to give them an opportunity to prepare. Republicans like Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley say Democrats should have waited until February to give Trump time to build his case. Regardless of how you feel about President Trump, he is now a citizen, not president of the United States. Uh, is uh, a for the due process. It's a common sense approach. South Dakota Republican Mike Round says rushing to impeach could mean Democrats sabotage their own legislative agenda. Tying up the Senate for an extended period of time. Friday afternoon, President Biden appeared to support the Republicans' timeline. The more time we have to get up and running and meet these crises, the, the better. In Washington, Raquel Martin, KCAU 9 News. Here in Siouxland, one of the three teenagers arrested in connection to the fatal New Year's shooting, pleading not guilty. 19-year-old Christopher Morales was charged with first-degree murder last week, the same charge as the other two men arrested face. Today, he entered a written plea of not guilty. Morales was due to be arraigned in court this coming Monday. Now, the other two involved that are charged, 18-year-old Carlos Morales and 18-year-old Anthony Bauer, set to be arraigned in court early next month. That shooting incident on Walker Street in the early morning hours on New Year's Day left 18-year-old Mia Critis dead and three others injured. When a Remsen grocery store went up in flames, the owner was more interested in selling the property than refurbishing it. But now, two and a half years later, the former Farm Fresh Food Town has a new owner who plans to make the space into another grocery store. But Jeremy Bunker, the man who purchased that space, says because of the damages totaling roughly $400,000, he needed the community's help before reopening. That's when donations and investors started pouring in. We spoke with some of those investors about what it means for the town of Remsen to have a local grocery store once again. It keeps folks in town. It takes care of uh, the needs of seniors that, that can't travel. So it's, it's just one of the core businesses, I would say. The new grocery store is expected to open up this summer, specifically on Memorial Day. That's the goal. Anyone who wants to help out can donate to the Remsen Economic Development Corporation. And back in Sioux City, the Public Museum is now offering a new travel exhibit, Lines with Power and Purpose. The editorial cartoon features 51 pieces from metropolitan newspapers during what they call the golden age of print journalism, addressing issues from the first half of the 20th century, like war, the Great Depression, presidential elections, and the public discontent with the U.S. government. People that like cartoons and, and like that type of artwork, I think, will, will just enjoy it for, for what it is, because some of them are quite humorous. Uh, you know, others are, are very serious. Uh, you know, they deal with war and major political issues and such, but sometimes they're about lighter-hearted topics as well. The exhibit will remain on display now through March 14th. Turning our attention now to the coronavirus, 15 health districts in Nebraska have begun their phase 1B of the vaccine plan. People age 65 and older are the priority, they say. This morning, health officials gave a timeline for the distribution. With our current allocations of approximately 94,000 a month, we calculate the 1B population to be approximately 500,000 people. Using 75% uptake for a planning factor, it would take approximately four months to get through phase 1B. Ling goes on to say people with comorbidities might also be vaccinated, but it is recommended they consult their health care provider first. A state vaccine notification board is scheduled to launch next week.
Meanwhile, a labor union representing state workers has filed a complaint tonight with OSHA claiming that a lack of a mask mandate in the state house in Des Moines threatens everyone's safety. The president of the AFL-CIO sent a letter to lawmakers yesterday calling their lack of masks a, quote, blatant avoidance of the seriousness of the pandemic, end quote. The complaint claims the legislative leaders have a duty to provide a workplace that is free from hazards that could cause death or physical harm. House Speaker Pat Grassley and Senate Majority Leader Jack Whitver have not required masks to be worn, and some GOP members do not wear them. Democrats are largely staying out of the building for caucus meetings and do wear face coverings when they are inside the building for a vote. Let's take a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Woodbury County Health reporting 18 cases in 24 hours. The positivity rate still on a steady decline, now sitting at 10.5%. In Nebraska, Dakota County with 12 new positive tests today, the county's positivity rate just under 6.5%. And in South Dakota, Lincoln County reports 10 new cases. The county's positivity rate there stands at nearly 11%. And it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, uh, not a bad day, especially for uh, what's now considered late January, but change is coming this weekend. That's right, Sophie. It was definitely cooler today, but really not bad out there. Not a whole lot of wind. And again, we had some clouds, but a little bit of sunshine at times today. High temperatures today reaching up into only the low to mid 20s for a lot of us. 24 in Sioux City, 21 in Lamar's, 23 for your high temperature in Orange City today, 25 in Yankton, Wayne at 27, but as you head east, Storm Lake only reaching up to 18, so definitely a little bit colder there. Overnight tonight, you can expect temperatures to drop down into the teens for a lot of us. Again, as you head east, we'll have upper single digits and lower teens, so it is going to be colder in eastern Siouxland. It looks like snow in the forecast for tomorrow. I'll have more details on that in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? Thanks, Marcus. In the Rushmore State, the Department of Tourism says a reduction in visitors and tourism income broke a 10-year streak of industry growth last year. According to an annual study by Tourism Economics released Thursday, the number of visitors to the state dropped by 13 percent to 12.6 million people in 2020. But the state did fare much better than others during the pandemic. And the industry's annual two-day conference in Pierre was marked with optimism. Many praise Governor Christy Nome for keeping the state open for business despite the pandemic and not imposing many restrictions. Now, visitors to South Dakota spent $3.4 billion last year. That is still a decline of 18% over 2019. Legendary MLB player Hank Aaron has died at the age of 86. According to his assistant, he passed away peacefully and in his sleep. Aaron taught himself how to play baseball, and he led the way for other African Americans to play in professional sports. On April 8, 1974, he hit his 715th home run. That broke Babe Ruth's record. He retired officially in 1976 and was elected to baseball's Hall of Fame back in 1982. The Hammer, as he was called, is regarded as one of the greatest hitters of all time. Rest in peace. Well, 2020 was a record year for sick outs. USA Today says federal labor market data showing just how many people were affected. An average of 1.5 million people a month missed work last year because of illness. That is the most in at least two decades and also 45% above normal. Women in the U.S. Air Force will soon have more options when it comes to how they wear their hair. Thursday, the Air Force officially announcing women will soon be allowed to wear their hair up in two braids or in a single ponytail, though with length and width limitations. Women will also be allowed to have bangs while serving in the U.S. Air Force, though they will not be permitted to be long enough to cover the eyes. Now, the USAF did consider beards for men, which are allowed with a waiver for medical or religious accommodations, but there are no plans yet to adjust the male grooming standards that are currently in place. Well, KCAU is proud to announce the start of a new weekly franchise. It's called Veterans Voices. The first story set to air Tuesday, February 16th, during your KCAU 9 News at 10. Nominations are currently open. If you know a veteran with a story to tell, email us at veteransvoices at kcautv.com. Horses, once on their way to slaughter, now given a change of fate. How a rescue ranch cared for them after they were injured in a crash coming up. And we are going to have those clouds continue to increase overnight tonight. Snow moves in tomorrow, and it looks like Monday is going to be very cold. Details on all of that after the break.
You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. So we are going to have below average temperatures and then it looks like they'll warm back up slightly above average. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Looks good. And Morningside College will soon be saying goodbye to one of its most important faculty members, John Reidners, who served as president since 1999, announcing plans to retire come 2022. He made such an impact on the campus and students' lives that they wish him luck on the next chapter of his life. We have more on his career in this digital exclusive story posted on our website right now. SueLandProud.com or click this story on the free KCAU 9 News app. The winning Powerball ticket has been sold and the buzz is lighting up a small town eager to find out who the winner is. What we know, coming up. But first, a crash could have easily taken these horses' lives, but instead it saved them from slaughter. Now they're needing a new home. How this rescue ranch is working to get them adopted next. Are you a veteran with a story that you'd like to share? Well, each week, KCAU 9 is featuring veterans sharing their stories on Veterans Voices, a salute to Siouxland veterans. For more information, contact us at Veterans Voices at KCAU TV. Late last October, several horses were headed for slaughter, but the truck transporting them crashed. Now in a twist of fate, some that survived are ready for adoption. Bridget Majoini has the story. Long Meadow Rescue Ranch wasn't originally a stopping point for the horses on the road trip up 44, but the accident giving them a new and improved destination. It's also uh, a twist of fate for them. A detour in the road on I-44. Where these horses would not have survived if they hadn't have been part of that trailer wreck. Later when we found out that it was a trailer where those horses were headed for slaughter. The semi heading for slaughter running off the passing lane overturning on its side on October 18th in Franklin County. So we had darkness the entire time we were out there. It was raining and it was a cold night. There's a lot of adrenaline that's pumping because you can hear the horses that are still in the trailer struggling and you want to get to help them, um, but you have to slowly move through the trailer um, to get the horses out one by one. Of the 15 surviving horses, 12 were transported to Longmeadow Rescue Ranch, where the worst of the accident took a turn for the better. There was about eight weeks of at least two employees that spent the entire day treating wounds. We were wrapping legs. Um, I mean, we had horses that had three out of four of their legs wrapped, and that means they had numerous lacerations. The first two months, the toughest for the team from managing trauma, stress, and weight. But now, three months later... Oh, they race around, and they're playing, and they're nutty, and we're kind of like, oh, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> without pain and ready for their forever home. Six out of the 12 currently available for adoption, giving even the worst of luck a twist for the better. For the 12 horses that are here, it definitely was a good thing. And they've endured some horrible pain, but they've made it through. Well, there's a lottery mystery in a small Maryland town. The winning ticket was sold at a local store, but no one knows who bought it. Why their identity remains hidden still next. Now on to the lottery mystery in a small town where someone is holding a $731 million Powerball ticket. ABC's Andrea Fuji explains why we may never know the big winner. Welcome to Lona Coney, Maryland. Population 1,200. Locals call their town Coney. They've hit hard times in recent years. Jobs are scarce in this former coal mining town. And the local paper mill recently shut down. But the Coney market is bustling. You can see with my staff over here, uh, uh, they've hung around and they're excited. This is where that monster $731 million winning Powerball ticket was sold. And the talk of the town is who's holding the winning ticket. And in a tiny town like this, you know, you're probably related to them. 20% <laughs> of residents here live in poverty. The coronavirus has only added to the economic devastation. People in Coney are hoping whomever won that jumbo jackpot. And tonight we have another life-changing jackpot for you. It's worth will invest in the town. When all you know is poverty, when something like this happens, you automatically want to share that with everyone else to get them up out of 
the bad places they're in. The mayor confirms the ticket belongs to a local couple, but they want to remain anonymous. Back at the Coney Market, they've sold a winning ticket before, but that was for the measly sum of $150,000, a mere pittance compared to this jackpot. This time, the store will get $100,000 just for selling the ticket. Oh, yeah, it's a big deal. My employees are going to benefit from it, so I'm going to renovate the store. Taking a live look outside right now, Marcus returns with one more check on our forecast coming up next, so stay with us. Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. A death investigation is underway this afternoon at Iowa State University in Ames. That after the body of a 21-year-old female student was found early this morning outside a sorority house there. Details still pretty sketchy, but we'll check in with what Ames police are saying coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Elsewhere tonight, also look forward to a new grant program that will provide $40 million in funding for establishments that had a decrease in revenue revenue in 2020. We're talking about Iowa bars and restaurants here. Find out how that money will become available. That's coming up at 6. And as you mentioned a bit earlier, another Siouxland community is coming together to bring a grocery store back to life. What folks have planned and why residents say it's so important, we'll check into that as well. That's all after World News Tonight, which is up next. All right, thanks so much, Tim. We'll see you then. And one more check on our weather. Yeah, it's going to be a cold night tonight. It does look like those clouds will stick around. 17 degrees tonight with some snow showers possible late tonight into tomorrow morning. But I think most of that snow will hold off until tomorrow. I have 28 tomorrow with a chance of snow, especially in the afternoon. All right, thanks, Marcus, and thanks for joining us. We'll both see you back here at 6. Good night.